All right, guys. In each of the following, draw a triangle to show that sine inverse 3 over 5 is the same as tan inverse 3 over 4. So it's very easy, right? Sine is what, guys? So, in this question, hypotenuse is 5. Sorry, h is 5. What's the opposite? And what's the adjacent? Okay. And you can just call this, just call this A for our argu argument's sake. Uh, which one's the uh, hypotenuse again? Your tree and your. So tan A equals 3 over 4 sine A equals what? And then what can we say about angle A? Equals tan inverse or sine inverse. It doesn't matter which one you use, you'll get the same answer for your angle. <coughs> okay? Is that right, you guys? Now, uh, in question two, part four is tricky. Right, so two, part four is tricky. So, I'll give you an example. Uh, to be honest, do you know what? This one probably, uh, this one probably just wanted you to use five and three like this, and you could have done Pythagoras' theorem to figure out that the other one was four. Does that make sense? It's it's not clear. Who's really confused? All right, confused with the last one. All right, well, look, please, you're honest. Let's hit it again. So. Do you remember SOH, Sokotoa? So, draw a triangle. I draw a right angle triangle. Uh, o is 3, H is 5. That's 5 and that's 3. Is that right? If I did Pythagoras' theorem, what would I get for X for argument's sake? And then 25 take away 9. X squared e X equals... Four. All right. Now, if you want to calculate this angle, Comiskey, what you essentially do is you either use sine inverse, cos inverse, or tan inverse. So you can say is that tan A equals three over four, and angle A would be tan inverse three over four. And likewise, you can also say, oh, cos A is what's it? Sorry, sorry, not cos A. Sine A is. 3 over 5 and A equals sine inverse 3 over 5. Now we have A is equal to the two of these, so you just have to prove them that they're equal to each other because they both equal angle A. Is that all right? Or? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's look at the next one. Next one's difficult. Part 4 is a tricky one. Okay. We're just going to keep angle A. Is that all right? Now, <clears throat> what's tan again? I would say tan inverse x over 1. So what's opposite? What's the adjacent? We call this h for argument's sake. What's h squared equal to? 1 squared plus x squared. And would everybody agree that that's 1 plus x squared? What can I do with the square on h? Square root both sides, what happens? Now you have your hypotenuse, don't you? What's your hypotenuse? Okay. Now what's angle? What's a? Uh, what's tan a equal to? What's tan a equal to? What's sine a equal to? Yeah, x over one plus squared. And finally, what's a equal to? Tan inverse x and sine inverse. So they're the same angle, essentially. Angle A is the same because you're talking about the same angle. And it's just two different ways of calculating it. So I'm after proving that they're conclusively the same. All right. Ouch. <clears throat> okay. This is uh, tricky. Pick one of them in the brackets. So I'll do part two. Once again. 
I'm going to draw myself a triangle. Okay? Now, see the way it says sine inverse? Okay? So what I'm going to say is that <coughs> I'm going to call this cos A. Is that okay? Everybody have its angle A again? And is everybody happy that angle A equals sine inverse X? That's what we replaced A with, wasn't it? Okay. Is everybody then happy that, that uh, go backwards a step? Sine A equals X. Does everybody understand that last step? Uh, you've been doing it for weeks now. If, uh, if sine A equals a half, A equals sine inverse a half. It's just when you bring the sine inverse back over, it resets the line. Okay? Now, what's X divided by? X is divided by 1. So, what two, what two uh, letters am I using here? Hypotenuse is 1. Opposite is... Is everybody happy that that's... Uh, that's 1 and that's X. Is that okay? How do I figure out what the other side is? Let's call it Y. Uh, huh? So, uh, we use Pythagoras' term. What do we get? What's Y squared on its own? Uh, 1 minus X squared. Does everybody get that? Bring the X squared to the left. Yeah. Are you just ignoring the cause of the Oh, yeah, I'm getting there. Getting there. Right. Uh, what's Y then? Okay. Do you remember at the very start of the question, I said, let A equal sine inverse X. Yeah? And then the question becomes, what is cause A? Well, what is cos A? It's adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So what's, what's adjacent? Divided by hypotenuse. And that's your answer. Guys, if you try part three on your own, okay? You all need to do one of them. All right. So... Once again, we're going to do the same trick we did earlier. We're not sine tan inverse x. What we're going to say is, just call it sine a. And we're going to say a equals tan inverse x over 1. Bring the tan back to where it was. You're essentially saying that tan a equals x over 1. Tan is a toa, which is opposite over adjacent. x will be the opposite. 1 is the adjacent. This is angle a. You do Pythagoras' theorem to find out what h is. h squared equals 1 squared plus x squared. h squared equals 1 plus x squared. h on its own is the square root of 1 plus x squared. Are you alright with that? So the hypotenuse is 1 plus, square root of 1 plus x squared. <coughs> now, what does the question become? Sine A. What's sine A? using what I have on the board. Opposite over hypotenuse, people. So what's the opposite? What's the hypotenuse? Plus x squared. There you go. All right. On to question four, part three now. You're doing the same method. Draw a triangle and see what happens. Step one. Throw it all into the calculator. Make sure you're in degrees modes. It'll tell you it's 807 in. Step two, the manual way, not that it tells you you have to do it manually, would look like this. You use sine A, don't you? And you say that A equals tan inverse. 8 over 15. What is 8 and 15? The opposite and the adjacent. So A is opposite, that's adjacent. Do Pythagoras' theorem, guess what the hypotenuse will be? 17. Find sine A. Opposite over hypotenuse is 
You can you can use the calculator if you want, but that's essentially how you do it manually without a calculator. Is that all right? Now question five or six six. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Have an idea. I do one, you do one. All right. So here's one. Here's my plan. That's A, that's B. Do you get what I'm saying? A is side inverse 5 over 13. <clears throat> what sides are 5 and 13? 13 is hypotenuse, 5 is? Is everybody okay with that? Are you sure? And would everybody be sure that sine A is 5 over 13? Cool, you guys? If you did Pythagoras' theorem, you can all, you're all capable of doing Pythagoras' theorem, are you? That comes out as 12. So what does that mean cos A is? 12 over 13. Come back, and now you're going to use, you're going to find out what B is. What's uh, the opposite and hypotenuse of B? 4 is the opposite, 5 is the hypotenuse. You do Pythagoras' theorem again, and it will turn out to be 3. Out, out of interest, what's sine B and cos B then? What's sine B? And what's cos B? Huh? Right? Now here's the good news. See the, w <coughs> See the way we replace these with A and B? What is sine A plus B? What's the formula? Sine A yeah. Sine B. And what numbers do I sub in? Yeah. Yeah. So we type down to the calculator. And what else? Yeah. 63 over 65? Yeah. You said yeah. Uh, grant some of your trust. All right. Part two, off you go. All right, let's. Can you just give us a few minutes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, in I go. Sorry, Joe. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, are you done? Yeah. All right. So, uh, essentially, what we did here was we said, look, you're going to be A, you're going to be B. In angle A, the hypotenuse is 5, the opposite's 1. Do Pythagoras' theorem. And did anybody get the square root of 24? Oh, root 5, my bad. Did anybody get 2? Yeah. Okay. So that means cos A is uh, 2 over root 5. Sine A is 1 over root 5. Now, same deal for B. Root 10 and 1. What do you think the uh, Jason is? And we get 3? Do Pythagoras theorem, get 3. So what does that mean about sine B and cos B? 3 over root 10 and... Oh, sorry, sorry. 1 over root 10 and... 3 over root 10. Okay. And then... I think I rubbed it out earlier. You gotta use the expansion, don't you? What's the expansion again? Sine A cos B and uh, yo. Yes, it is. And sine B is one over root ten. Sorry, my fault. Thank you. Cos A sine B. So did anybody get a one over root five multiplied by? 3 over root 10. 
plus uh, 2 over root 5 multiplied by 1 over root 10. And does that come all out to be 1 over root 2 when you put it in the calculator? Oh yeah, root 2 over 2 is exactly the same as 1 over root 2, they're the same thing. If you didn't know that, just change it to decimal mode and you'll see that both numbers are exactly the same. Alright, you're on to question 8 now. Alright, tan A is 3 over 4. You do Pythagoras' theorem and you get a, uh, a 3, 4, 5 triangle, is that right? Yeah, no, don't worry, don't worry. All right. Sine A is what, lads? Opposite over hypotenuse. And cos A is? 4 over 5. Are you cool with that? Now, you're, you need to find out what sine 2A is, but you, you have a formula for sine 2A. What's the formula for sine 2A? 2 sine A, cos A. So just use that formula using the two values you have here. And that should work out. So you can figure out what sign you can figure out what all this is. This is essentially sine two A. Because I said angle A equals tan inverse three over four. So you're using the sine two A formula to do the left hand sides. Alright? And then to do the right hand side it's what you did in the last question. You you figure you know what cos B is. So what you're gonna have to figure out is if you know cos B is seven over twenty five, figure out what sine B is by completing the triangle doing Pythagoras' theorem and prove that both sides are equal to each other. So uh, what do I what did I do today? I did uh, two, three, four, six and eight. For homework tonight, do two, three, four, five, seven and eight. Yeah, I know.